you got some projects that you would like to use on Raspberry Pi, but you're not really wanting to pay those high, high prices right now for the Raspberry Pi. Well, the ham radio dude over here is his thumbnail to his video, link in the description. Come across the Envato Quadra, and he was able to install ham Pi from KM4ACK on there. And that got me thinking, well, hey, you can use this as a Raspberry Pi. I'm going to dedicate the Quadra to adsbexchange.com and use a use it as a feeder into the network well it come in i got it and guess what it did not work out like a raspberry pi so i put the micro sd card that came from adsb exchange into the quadra and it did nothing i was able to pull it up on the file system but i'm not a linux guy sorry i didn't know what to do with it so i made a bootable sd card put it in there it did nothing. It just goes straight up to booting to the Quadra and I had to come up with something different. So what I ended up doing, well, right over here, adsbexchange.com, and you'll go and click on share your data. Now, of course, start fresh, use our SD card image. Right there, if you got an RTL SDR or something, I think you can still use that but the dongle that they sell comes with the 1090 filter uh, that will make your receiving better. But this didn't work for me. So I had to do it manually. So I opened up a terminal client in the Quadra and I scrolled down here. And number one, find your coordinates and elevation. So you're gonna wanna do that. Click on that link, go ahead and find your location. It'll give you your height above sea level and give you your latitude and longitude that you're going to need in setting up the client put that in the background and then number two install the feed client and this is where you open up a terminal window copy and paste that into your terminal window hit enter it's going to ask you for the quadra root password you'll type that in and it'll start to download the feed client keyboard Please enter a unique name to be shown on the map. Well, we'll do K5YVY ADSD. Hit enter. As you see, I was having just a little bit of problem reading the screen. I was using a capture card through the HDMI at first to read all this, but if you just go through the prompts, fill out the information that it asks of you, and you'll be good to go in just a few minutes. Now, once it's connected, because there's not a lot going on on the screen, you don't really know. I spent a lot of time going, well, what next? You click over here and this will show you that your data, your feeder connection is good and it's got your latitude and longitude and your location on the map is connected. You get two smiley faces here, you're good to go. And then you can also click this ADSB Exchange Anywhere map. And this is showing only the aircraft that you're receiving on the map. If you zoom out, you'll see it gets thinner. I'm not receiving anything else. If I was on just the regular adbsexchange.com map, that would be filled up with hundreds of planes. And I ran this antenna outside. So I happen to have a pretty good section of SMA coax already. So I fed it through the wall and put it outside and connected the antenna up. Here's some stats. And this has been running overnight and most of today. As you can see quite the amount of aircraft, 74. Looks like the most I've received at one time so far. And this gives you your information of those aircraft. Latitude and longitude is a pretty neat little deal. I've just, something I've been curious about and trying to do my part to help because the reason is just the other day, we had a tornado come through the county and being the public safety and part 107 drone flyer of the county, one of two that we've got so far, we had two drones up in the air surveying, helping get pictures for the emergency management and the national weather service and some video of the damage. And as we are surveying, we've got about $30,000 worth of drones in there. And by the time we hear this low flying aircraft, 
there it is. And the only thing we could do was yell at each other to descend, 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 because we have to yield to the aircraft, although he was flying at the treetops. And when I looked at my map, he's not reporting AD, ADSB. I don't know if he had a transponder on or not, but it's things like that that's got me interested into this because I'm like, you know, if I had to guess, there's probably not very many receivers around my area. And you can look up, you can look up the map feeder here and zoom in on your area. And once I did that, that's it. This is me, K5YVY, and this is Mr. G Keys, somebody located in New Omni. But me and him are the only two receivers in this wide area. So yes, it's pretty sparse. But I didn't even realize that we had one in the county at all. So it's nice to know that there is one other. But I was hoping to improve low flying reception of aircraft. I, I noticed some of the medical helicopters and stuff when I'd look at them, when they get about 1200 feet or lower, they would go off the map. And I was just thinking maybe they're getting low in height and they're not reaching the receiver. So I don't know if this will really improve that or not, but it was worth a try. A lot of information there. There's also the ADS-B Exchange feed client. Uh, well, more than just the feed client. Their GitHub has the image builder and the feed client. But if you'll go to feed client, read through this, a lot of good information here. Pretty much what was on the website back here, but a little bit more detailed and easier to copy and paste by just clicking these buttons here. So. One thing for the Quadra that you're gonna want is a remote desktop. This makes life a little easier. When I first set this up, I only had one USB port available after having the dongle plugged in. So I was having to switch between plugging the keyboard in and the mouse in, depending on what I needed to do. Finally, I wised up and said, all right, let's get a VNC. So look up x11 vnc and have that installed onto your quadra and then you can use real vnc viewer or whatever your choice of software is to remote into this thing and use it on your desktop or other device and also i want to mention you see this over my shoulder here well you recognize that that is ham clock and that comes from ham build a pie from KM4 ACK Ham Pie. Um, so you can go over to KM4 ACK's GitHub page and see all these nice pie builds and the things that you can put in it. So this is what I've done. If you ever done Ham Pie from KM4 ACK, then you know how easy this is. It steps you through every bit of the process, lets you make the selections of what you want, what you don't want. In this case, I didn't want anything but the ham pie for the Quadra. That's all I was going to use it because I didn't have any peripherals or radios or anything hooked up to it yet. So you go over to his GitHub and you can go down and just get this install script, copy and paste that into your terminal window on the Quadra, hit enter, and then it's going to start coming up and stepping you through things. Like I said, what do you want? What do you don't want? Of course, he's also got the tutorial videos. He's got a lot of videos to step you through anything that you may want to know about build a pie. So there you go. There's a little rundown of how I did ADSB exchange receiver on the Envato Quadra and got ham pie running in the background over here behind me on my TV all at the same time. I hope maybe this inspires you to play around a little bit with the Envato Quadra and our Raspberry Pis if you have one laying around and see what you can do. Thank you for coming by the video in 73.